Hello church, welcome to Exodus 36, 37, and 38. I want to say again, there are more things that the Holy Spirit could speak to you out of these chapters than what I'm going to have time to say in the next five minutes here. But I want to point out a couple of things and you'll recognize the Bible is so rich, so beautiful, it's impossible for us to ever plumb the depths of it, okay? But here are a couple things to, to I want you to see in these beautiful chapters. First, look at the orderliness of God's plan that he gives and the instruction that he gives to Moses. If you think about how the ark is built in chapter 37, it's one and a half by two and a half by one and a half high, right? The, the table, uh, the lampstand, the altar of incense is one by one by two. The altar of burnt offering, five by five by three. And you see this real very strategic orderliness. The, the courtyard is 50 by 100 and the 50 is on the east side. God has a plan for all those things and there is an orderliness here that we need to remember. God is not a God of chaos. He is not a God of disorder. James 3 talks about that. 1 Corinthians 14 talks about this, how God is not a God of chaos but of order. This is a big deal to remember and not overlook. We really get to see that here. In fact, it's connected to the spiritual gifts that we see in so 1 Corinthians 14, for instance, that same chapter that talks about the orderliness of God is also a chapter that talks a lot about spiritual gifts or chapter 12, two chapters prior and so on. Here's what we see. I want to show you something in Exodus 36 verse 2. First of all, recognize this. Look at that, Oholiab and Bezalel, they have two things in play. When they are used effectively, they had the ability, but they also had the willingness to use the ability. Those things coupled together under the Lord's direction and his empowerment is like gold. That's it, church. Think about it. Has he given you an ability that you are not using? You could talk to him about that and you could just ask him, Lord, am I using the abilities you've given me? And just spend some time there. Are you willing? And then you'll notice that as you go through these chapters, there's at least five different spiritual gifts that are well represented in these chapters. If you go back to chapter uh, 36, verse 1, you'll already recognize that Bezalel and Aholiab, it says they know how to carry out the works. So that's like the spiritual gift of a word of knowledge. There's, or the gift of a word of knowledge allows a person to know how to do something, to know what to say. There's, a, there's knowledge there. But then they also know how to do the work. They're able to carry out the work and actually do it, which is like the gift of wisdom or a word of wisdom, which know, know, tells us how to apply that word of knowledge. And so there's already two gifts that are closely connected that you see the same pattern in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Then as you read through these chapters, you'll also recognize there is a gift of giving that clearly comes out here. And you've already seen it in some of the previous chapters that we've read. But for instance, in chapter 36, verse 6 and 7, they are restrained from giving because that's how generous they were in their giving. Well, if you look at what Romans 12 talks about giving, that's exactly what the New Testament calls those people with the gift of giving to give. Every Christian is called to give something. But certain people have a gift of giving and they ought to do it then generously. According to the New Testament, and that's exactly what we see here. Then you'll also recognize there's people with a gift of helps. The New Testament talks about that in 1 Corinthians 12. But here in these chapters, just think about all the people that are working kind of behind the scenes, if you will, that are required, they are necessary to, to carry the material, to build the thing, to, to carry out the design. God has said, here's the pattern, but these people are needed to help make it happen. And that's also necessary in the New Testament church. And that's why God gives some people the gift of helps. They need to be coupled together. Then you also have people with the gift of administration. Every time you see the number of rings that are on a curtain or the number of curtains in the courtyard or the, num the number of uh, the amount of gold that's used for the lampstand or whatever. And the lampstand, even notice this, the lampstand is all in one. It's not multiple pieces. It's made as one. All of the recording of those things is from someone who has is practicing a gift of administration. We need those things today. If you're trying to organize an, an event or keep track of things, records of money or, or things in the church, you need somebody who has a gift of administration. 
So when you see all of these things working together in these chapters, then you can ask this question about us today in, the, in our church setting. Are we using the gifts that God has given us? Or do I appreciate the giftings he's given others? Why don't you do something like this today? Why don't you text somebody and say, hey, I noticed that you have this gifting. Thank you for using it. Encourage them in that. Even encourage the people in your own household with the same thing, especially if they are your kids or your parents. And you might even think about that in the church context to encourage somebody with those giftings. And then you'll notice one little nugget in 38 verse 8. There's mirrors in that basin in which the priests, when they washed, as they saw the dirt being removed from their face, it's a reminder of how when we are washed and Jesus forgives us, we get to see the reflection of that filth being removed from us and we're forgiven. Praise the Lord, church, and don't be shy about it.